The footwork movement that badminton players struggle with the most is the round the head scissor kick. You should actually use this roughly 80% of the time when someone has lifted to your backhand side, no matter if you're playing singles or doubles. It's such an important movement you need to learn if you want to be a good badminton player. Yeah, so we're going to give you a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to do this movement, helping you be faster to the shuttle, play better shots and ultimately win more points. And even if you can already do this, we'll be giving you tips on how to maximise your efficiency to be even faster to the shuttle and also recover better afterwards. It's going to be a video you might need to save and watch multiple times, so let's get straight into it. You start with a directional split step with your non-racket legs slightly behind. Not doing a split step or doing it too slowly is why we see a lot of people forced to take a backhand, so this is really important to get right. And a quick tip is that you don't have to be in the middle of the court to start this movement, but we'll talk more about this later in the video. After the split step, both legs should be bent and you push off with your racket leg. This push off is where you can make extra gains in terms of your movement speed, so try to push off as quickly and explosively as you can. When you've pushed off with your racket leg and it's coming behind you, you then need to do this mini jump or pivot on your non-racket leg. This pivot is so important for two reasons. One is that it helps you change the angle of where your foot is facing so that you can be in a sideways position which enables you to rotate into the shot. And if you're already facing sideways like this, then great, you don't need to pivot. Two is that it helps you make adjustments to exactly where the shuttle is going. If you're closer to the shuttle, you'd only do a small jump, whereas if you're further away, you would do a bigger jump. In this clip, you can see Jenny doing an extra chasse step to move to the shuttle. And this is something that you can do after the pivot if your mini jump isn't going to be enough to cover the required distance. A common mistake we see is people not doing this mini jump during their pivot and just turning on the spot. And this ruins the rhythm of your movement. Instead, it needs to be fluid and flow, like a river. This is definitely the hardest part of this footwork and it does take practice, which we'll get onto later in the video. But first, we need to go through the final two steps of this movement. So once you're in this sideways position after the pivot, you need to perform what we call a scissor kick movement. It's called this because from this position, you push off your racket leg and your legs switch like scissors. This helps you generate power and control in the shot and also recover back into court afterwards. We're not gonna go into detail on the hitting action here as this depends on what shot you're playing. So we'll link to videos on the different techniques in the description below. Now, there's two things you shouldn't do during this scissor kick movement. One is that you shouldn't pause on your back leg. This completely ruins the timing of your shot. Instead, the weight transfer should be quick. Remember, it needs to flow like a river. And the push off your back leg doesn't always need to be that powerful. For instance, when you're playing a drop shot when the shuttle is behind you. And two is that you shouldn't over-rotate as you're doing the scissor movement. This is because, A, you might strike the shuttle at the wrong contact point, causing it to go out the side of the court. And B, it will cause you to land like this, impacting your recovery, which we'll move on to now. So after you've hit the shuttle, you want to land with your legs wide and bent. This will help you absorb the landing and remain on balance when moving at speed. And this means you'll be able to recover faster. Here you can see the difference between the speed of my recovery when I land with my legs wide compared to when I land with my legs closer together. It's also important to land with your feet at a slight sideways angle. If you have your feet facing forwards, you'll probably fall back and therefore need an extra step to recover. Now, as soon as you've landed, you push off with your non-racket leg and do one of either two recovery movements, a running step or a chasse. Which you do will typically depend on what shot you play and how on balance you were when you hit it. For example, if you play a straight smash because you were on balance, you might then anticipate the straight block and move directly there using the running step. Or if you weren't quite as on balance and played a drop, you might then do a chasse step back into the centre of the court. If you find that despite following these steps, you still struggle with your recovery, then try to really focus on using your core. This will help bring you back into court and also add power to your shot. And if you find you're struggling with your general movement speed and strength, then we'd recommend checking out our Bampton specific weights programs. There's 12 programs plus two gym circuits and two hotel programs, all designed specifically for Bampton. 
So we'll link to those in the description below if you want to check them out. And there's also core programs available too. Now, like with many techniques in badminton, you need to practice. So here are three different levels of practice to master this movement. The first is repeating this movement again and again without a shuttle. We know what you're thinking, this sounds boring, but it's essential to a badminton player's development. We did this so many times as kids, and even if you're not a kid, you can still retrain your muscle memory. Unfortunately, it will just take even more practice. You should get to a point where you can do this without even thinking. Maybe whilst having a conversation, listening to music, which we used to do a lot, or even with your eyes closed. The next level is to add in a shuttle, either by getting someone to high serve to you or by adding in one shot first. At this stage, you should be doing it in a pattern that you can consistently do. A key tip is to not try to go too slow. You need to practice like how you'd play in a match. The third level is to incorporate your new smooth and efficient footwork into open routines and then matches. An example of a good open routine in singles is to have a feeder in one corner and you hit everything back to them, but they can hit anywhere. They should hit around one in every four shots to your round the head corner. For doubles, a good routine is mid rear, where one or two feeders hit everything past the halfway point of the court. And you're practicing being the rear court player if you were in a front and back formation. And a reminder here is to think about what shots you're playing and adjust your recovery accordingly. Like we mentioned earlier, you might smash straight and move forwards when it's hard for your opponents to play cross court. And like with many aspects of badminton, to really master this movement, you need to put the hours in and practice it a lot. One thing we've not mentioned yet is that you use this scissor kick movement off a medium height lift. But what happens if it's a flat lift? Well, here we'd recommend doing a jump out movement. It's a difficult one to master, which is why we've made an entire video breaking it down, which you can watch by clicking here. And that's it for this video. If you found it insightful, please drop it a like, smash the subscribe button if you haven't already, and we'll see you on another video very soon.